Hi you guys, so welcome back to my channel here at Latina Plants. My name is Jackie and today we're going to do an African Violet repot. I want to show you guys how I repot my African Violets as well as how I propagate them and what I do to combat or prevent any kind of bug outbreak. Let's go ahead and get to this video. So we're going to start with this African Violet here. I picked this up at Lowe's. I talked about it in my birthday plant haul. If you haven't watched that, go ahead and check it out. I'm taking it out of its cute little face catch pot that I also picked up at Lowe's. And I'm going to use this clear bowl that I picked up at Dollar Tree just to get rid of the soil and the flowers. So the first thing I'm going to do, and yes, this breaks my heart to have to do this, but I'm going to pluck off all of the blooms. You're just going to wiggle the stem to the left and right until you hear a snap. Sometimes the entire stem will come out, so you'll have to um, grab the end of the stem. Try to get it closest to the base so that you get the entire stem out. So as you watch me here, I'm just going to continue to remove all of these flowers, all of the blooms. Now you can, if you want, save this in a vase, a little vase with water until they expire so you can continue to enjoy them. But the main reason that I am plucking the flower blooms is because the thrips larva likes to feed on the pollen from the blooms. And so to make sure that I'm not bringing in any thrips, into my home, I'm going to pluck off all the blooms. And you also want the plant to focus its energy towards growing more roots. And here I'm using a tweezer just to get one of the stems that my fingers can't fit in there to get that broke off not too close to the base. So you want to just continue to look around and see if there's any more stems to pull out. And now I'm going to pull it out of its nursery pot. It looks like it's got a good amount of roots, but this soil is too compact for an African violet in your home, well, in my home. So I'm going to get rid of it. It's pretty dry, so it was easy to get rid of the soil. I'm going to just use my hands and gently remove it as well as use a wooden skewer. And here is another stem that was further down. I'm going to use my tweezers again to remove it just because I don't want to damage the plant or snap off a leaf by accident. And now gently, as you can see, I'm using a wooden skewer and this is just to get rid of the soil. I like to get rid of all of the soil. Some people get rid of the soil and the roots. Um, this is my first go around at repotting African violets. So this is what I've been doing for my African violets. And then I use a synthetic brush, makeup brush. It actually came with a succulent tool kit I believe and I'm just going to brush away as much of the soil as I can from the center as well as from the roots and here I'm using my tweezers to get one of them foam balls in this soil they actually had like styrofoam balls and now I'm going to take the plant to my utility sink and I'm going to use this garden safe house plant insecticidal spray and I like to put it in this spray bottle because it sprays evenly without soaking your plant and this is what it looks like I'm gonna put it aside this is the soil mix that I'm going to pop my African violet in and the soil mix is the Espoma organic African violet soil with 50% of the perlite just your regular old perlite from Home 
the lower lows and I'm going to reuse these jello cups that my kids get jello or like fruit cups in and I've already put holes in them and then I'm going to use these deli cups that I've ordered for propagations and poyas and now I'm looking at the leaves again and I see that it has some that are damaged and those I'm just going to toss. I'm not even going to keep them to propagate because I don't want to risk any pest outbreaks. And these look healthy, so I'm going to go ahead and snap some of them. Possibly about three of them because I don't want to pluck too many leaves off. It doesn't have too many leaves to begin with. And after we get done propagate or potting up our African violet, We'll go ahead and propagate these leaves, so stay tuned to see the propagation as well. And here I'm thinking if I should pull off any more leaves. I could have pulled off the three larger ones, but I decided to leave them in. And as you can see, these jello cups are a perfect size for the root ball of this African violet. You don't want to pot up this African violet in too big of a pot because it's going to work on repairing its roots and growing bigger leaves and you want to minimize the amount of time. And I picked up these mesh pads on Amazon. I'll probably put everything down in the description for you guys and I like it because it helps prevent the soil from going down the holes when you water. And just a little spoon to scoop everything in there do a small layer of the soil and then put my African violet in and I'm going to use some of this myco just to help with the transplant shock and it adds good bacteria to the soil as well. I want to give this plant the best chance it can get to root in the soil and that's why I'm using the myco and now going ahead and filling around the plant with the soil. I hope you guys enjoy this African Violet repot. I'm enjoying the blooms and the beautiful plants as well as propagating them and repotting them and learning more about them. I think they are beautiful plants and again they are from Africa. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but African Violets from Home Depot and Lowe's do not come with IDs. And you can't ID an African Violet like you can some other plants. So if you find another plant that has the same leaves and flowers, you can't say that your plant is the same as that one and ID it yourself because there are a lot of African Violets that look the same but are different IDs. So if you want to be a collector with IDs of African violets, the best choice is to go to a nursery or somebody who cultivates them and get the IDs there with the plant. I didn't even know that the African violet community was so big, but it really is. And here I'm showing you in my squeeze bottle, I have some water with some Super Thrive. I also want to put in some of this um, systemic granules on the top of the soil just to make sure that if there are any pests on the leaves, feeding on the leaves, that they don't continue to live. And now I'm going to go ahead and water it in. I'm going to water it in thoroughly because I don't want the soil to settle into any of the air gaps as well as I want to water in the systemics so that the plant can take up the systemics and work. But you don't want to put too much water because you don't want to flush everything out of the soil. And now just pressing in firmly to make sure that it is nice and firm in the pot. And then I'm going to put a little layer, since the soil sunk in a little, on top. And press it in a little firmly. 
and we are done with our African Violet repot. Now we're going to work on the African Violet leaves. I'm going to show you how I propagate them. You want to use an X-Acto knife. Make sure that it is clean and sanitized. And you want to go and leave about an inch and cut at a 45 degree angle. I like to do it on a clean surface, so I'm using this paper towel. And I like to use the Clonex. You can use Clonex. You can also use rooting hormone, but um, the ones that I've had great success in have been the ones that I've used the Clonex gel. I can link that, link that down below as well for you guys. And so I put them aside and then let's go ahead and get these little deli cups ready for them we need three of them and i like to use this heat tool here that i had in my craft collection and it's from we are memory keepers and it's called the fuse tool i will link that down below for you guys but there are other options that are less costly i know this one costs a little bit more but i had it on hand and that's why i'm using it rather than going out and getting another tool so I like it because it heats up and it goes right through the plastic like butter and yeah it does let out some fumes from the plastic when you do this but I don't think it's anything major and here I'm gonna go in with the mesh again I did cut it up to fit in these little cups into four pieces the one circle and now we're going to use the same mix and we're going to fill up these little cups all the way to the top. And I'm also going to put systemic granules in these. And once you fill up your little cups, you want to put some systemics in there and then shake it up a little just so it settles into the soil. So we're going to do that for all three of the little deli cups. And when I'm all done with these, I'm going to show you where I keep the propagations and the mother plant as it gets used to its soil. And growing new roots. finishing up the third one you're going to grab one of the leaves and you're going to push it into the soil gently at a 45 degree angle more towards the back of the cup so that the plant has room to come out of the soil and you want to push it in all the way up until the leaf reaches the top of the soil if you're having trouble pushing in the leaf you can also squeeze the cup a little bit so that you can get the stem in then you just want to tamp it down just a little to make sure it's secure and not gonna fall out and after you're done pushing these stems in you want to go ahead and grab your squeeze bottle or your water however way you have your water I try not to get any water on the leaves and just add a small amount of water to the top of your soil you can fully saturate the soil if you want but there are no roots to take up the water so I try to do a small amount so that it's not dripping and I do sit it on the paper towel in case the water does flow really fast and out absorb any of the excess water and so go ahead and water all three of your propagations and next I'm going to show you where I keep them I like to keep them on my plant shelf I have a tray and dome that I put them on and they are under 
some Verena T5 grow lights. And this is what they look like. They're all lined up. I do also label and date them by the color of the flower. And I have a little sticky trap in case there are any pests that are on the leaves if they grow up to adulthood while in the dome and growing they will not make their way out and so African violets can deal with some humidity as long as it's not too much and the leaves aren't getting wet and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll check you guys out on my next one bye so if you enjoyed the African violet repot and propagation Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not a subscriber already, click on that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video, and I'll check you guys out on my next video. Bye!